How the heretics? In this video I will show you my six suggestions how the government can protect children growing up in high control groups or cults like the Jehovah Witnesses. Because the government should not be policing religion, that's not their job. But they do have the job to protect children. And my suggestions are easy to implement in most functioning democracies. So, we just have to sell these over and over again. And I was at a political meeting last week, it was very nice. And I got to sit at the same table as Uni Bastholm, which is a Norwegian member of parliament, a very talented politician. And she told me she actually worked as a goat herder up in the Norwegian mountain, making her own cheese. So, that's cool. So Norwegian politics is like Fifty Shades of Bernie Sanders, I won't go into that. But it's kind of a cool country and laid-back politicians you can talk to. <laughs> I can give you one example. When I was pioneering, that's a, a cult recruiter for Jehovah Witnesses, I didn't have any money so I used a hitchhike. And the guy who picked me up was called Per Borten and he was the Prime Minister or the former Prime Minister. That's a cool country. <laughs> when the politicians work as goat herders and the prime minister picks up hitchhikers. So, I love Norway. And in the beginning when I started to talk to politi politicians from different parties, uh, you know, they were listening polite and I was telling all these terrible stories, but they just wanted to get rid of me because I forgot to focus on what can be done. We should always focus on what can be done. It's easy to get stuck in the track. Then we talk about, you know, the sexual abuse, the emotional abuse, the crimes, the um, all the abuse that happens to children. But we forget to talking about what can be done. So these are my six steps. And uh, in the beginning they tried to get rid of me, but you know what I say, by endurance we conquer, and I'm not giving up, so they start to listen. And like I said, we're planning 12 hashtag all religions must this year, trying to. So media attention creates media attention, and human rights are universal. So they know what we're talking about. So these are my six steps. Because Religion must respect human rights. Government are legally obligate, obli obligated to respect human rights, but religions are technically not obligated. So my meal ticket here is to establish a connection. And that's really easy because just follow the money. Government gives government funding, charitable status or tax exempt to organization that violates human rights. So, I can't give money to Al-Qaeda because then I would be a terrorist, because I give them money. So how can the government claim that they respect human rights while they're handing out money to organization that violates human rights? They can't. So we just have to show them what to do. So my first point is, as always, hashtag all religions must, all religions must respect human rights. And to get government funding, there normally is a existing legislation f for charities or relig uh, like the Norwegian says, livsyn som fund som ikke krenker rett og sønn kan kreve årlig tilskudd fra statskassen. It says that a religion that don't violate righteousness and decency can ask for money. Well, what constitutes righteousness and decency? No one knows, especially not the bureaucrats. So they just hand out money, blindly. Watchtower got 1.6 million US dollar last year, I think. So, in Norway it would be possible to change this. To say that a religion that don't violate human rights can ask for money. That's a small change from an archaic wording that no one understand to a modern wording that we know exactly what it means. We have legal specialists, much more than me, that can look at something and say, yes, this constitutes a violation of human rights. So, that's my first change, a suggestion. 
just change the wording in existing legislation. And then secondly, when they ask for money annually, they should fill out the form that they respect human rights and what they maybe changed since last year to be better. And it's important to remember, politicians always forget this because politicians, they, they think like in democracy, you have the legislator, like the Congress, you have the, you have the three branches of government, but in a cult, you only have one. So they write the legislation, but they themselves interpret it. So Watchtower uh, normally say that, well, in order to be baptized, Jehovah's Witnesses only baptize adults. And you have to commit a serious sin to be disfellowshipped. And we don't shun family members. While in real life, they interpret adults as seven-year-old. They interpret a serious sin as being the victim of rape <laughs> or partake in any democratic process. And they defini uh, define family members as a person living under the same roof. So if I kick out my child, he's no longer family. So we don't shun family. So when they do go, then my second point, when they do look at this annually, if they respect human rights, they should talk with the ex-cult members and focus on the culture. Because it's really easy for any cult just to write some internal legislation that say, we don't shun and we don't do this, we don't do that. But important is not what they say. You have to look at what they do. And then you actually have to talk to cult, ex-cult members. They have to have the possibility to testify. Because we all know that ex Cult members love the cult. It's like an abusive relationship. You know, they say, I love my psychopath. He's the best thing that happened to me. But when they um, cons uh, leave the psychopath and start thinking for themselves, they see this was terrible. <laughs> but when they are in the... Being a cult member is the same as being in an abusive relationship. So, second point. They should also talk to the ex-cult members. So the third point is who should have the benefit of the doubt? Watchtowers say, well, unless, this is true, they say, unless the government can prove that we violate human rights, they have to give us money. And most politicians actually agree with that because they don't think it through. That's not how money works. If I have the money, you have the burden of evidence. If I go to a, a car salesman and I ask him, this car you want to sell me, does it work? And he looks at me and say that, I have the burden of evidence and he has the benefit of the doubt. I will go to another car salesman because if he wants my money, he has the burden of evidence. And we, if Watchtower or any religion wants government funding, charitable station, tax exempt, they should have the benefit of the doubt. No, the burden of evidence. And who should have the benefit of the doubt? The children. If you cannot prove that you don't violate human ri uh, children's rights, then the children within your organization should have the benefit of the doubt. That's my third thing. The cults have the burden of evidence. The children have the benefit of the doubt. Number four is that extreme shunning should be illegal. So I'm not, you, you can't tell people to socialize. If people don't want to be friends, don't want to hang out, the government can't do anything about that. But when we're talking about organized extreme shunning, when a multi-billion dollar organization like Watchtower use extreme shunning as a way of enforcing their business, that should be illegal by itself. It's already illegal because it's blackmail. Blackmail is punishable in Norway with six years in jail. If I would tell my employee that unless you're happy with this salary, I will take away your family, I go to jail for six years. Watchtower gets away with it. Until now. We have to stop that. That's extreme shunning. I can give you another example. My parents haven't spoken to me in years because I, I criticize the cult leaders. So, but that, that should be their decision. 
if they don't want to talk to me because I'm a terrible son, I'm okay with that. <laughs> but they, maybe, maybe that's the case, I don't know. I don't talk to them, but they don't talk to me. But it's really not their decision. Because if they do talk to me, they have five kids, so if they talk to me, they will lose the other four. The decision is not there. The decision is Watchtower Printing Company. They would lose four children if they talk to me. And that's extreme shunning, and it should be illegal. The fifth is really easy sell. It's really easy sell. I never met a politician that disagree with this. You have to work on your sales pitch. But the fifth is that there should be in the penalty code of your country a ban on explicit sexual interviews of children. When, when like the Mormons do have, the Jehovah Witnesses do have, you have to sit down with an elder or a bishop and they ask you about the law of chastity. They ask young girls about their masturbation, how many fingers they use to the climax. As a young Jehovah Witness boy, I had this masturbation calendar. You can find it in Watchtower literature. And you have to show that to a grown man. And I would lie and say I only did it once a month. That was lie. And I hated myself. And they do it on purpose, because people that hate themselves are easy to control. And due to my problem of masturbation, I decided to get baptized and pioneer, because I thought maybe I can earn God's love. That's the wrong way of uh, motivating your employees. But it's also, it's not decent. Imagine a grown man sitting with children, questioning them about their masturbation, saying it's a crime worthy of death. I never met any politician that disagree with me on this point. Everyone say, yeah, that should be illegal. <laughs> That's an easy sell. Point number five. And then my point number six is, Screening for emotional trauma. You know, when you go to school the uh, first year, they have a physical check, and then when you are 10 years old, they have another physical check. Imagine if they would have if they also have a screening of emotional trauma. Talk to the children. A profession. I'm not a mental health professional, so I cannot give any advice how this should be done, but <laughs> obviously it would be a good thing. You could help children on an early stage in life. That's not only cult children, but 15 years from now you would have adults that don't self-medicate with the drugs. We would <laughs> this is a really cheap investment for any society to on an early stage talk to children about how they feel and obviously I don't know the exact wording because I'm not a mental health specialist. But it would also make it much difficult, uh, more difficult for cults. Like when we were kids, we got beatings all the time. I used to get beating on Tuesdays, Thursdays and Sundays, mostly Tuesdays. And it was this whole speech before that, and that's from Watchtower. They always start with showing from the Bible that disobedience children should be stoned to death. So you deserve to die. And I had to express gratitude for not being killed, even though I deserve to die. Then it was that it was my fault and I had to apologize for my parents for putting them to emotional trauma. And then we got a beating and then we had to practice on what to say to the police because the police hated Jehovah Witnesses and wanted to kill us. And it wasn't fair that my police should be executed by the Swedish police because I was a bad child that deserved to die. So we were drilled hours and hours and hours how to lie to the police 
and how to lie to the child protection service. I remember also, you know, about blood. We had to practice how to how to lie to a judge. I would rather die than have a blood transfusion. This is my own opinion. It's not my parents' opinion. I'm not inflated on my uh, influenced by my parents in any way. And then in Watchtower, there were two things we got to choose between to say. One was receiving another person's blood would feel like someone spit in my mouth and the other one was uh, receiving another person's blood would feel like a rape that was not my opinion that was watchtower's opinion we practiced so it's difficult when we're talking about these really evil narcissistic cults the police cannot question the kids because we're trained to lie to the police and we're trained to see the police as the enemy that wants to kill our parents and put our siblings in concentration camp. But a screening for emotional trauma is a different thing. You would find emotional trauma and you could help them different ways. Not taking them away from the parents, but you could help them different ways. I'm not a mental health specialist, so I won't go into detail, but I think that's something that would benefit society in the long run and wouldn't cost anything and you see all these things none of uh, politicians love money that's a good thing none of this would cost money we're basically asking them to keep money and to invest in the next generation instead that's an easy sell but someone has to do it so like i said we're planning i want 12 protests hashtag all religions must this year and thank you for all these people that tried to help me. And if you want to plan a protest, take contact. I do believe we're make it, making a difference. And if we focus on what can be done, instead of getting in the track of telling how terrible everything was, we talk about the future, what can be done for the next generation. And then we're making a difference. And we talk to the politicians and we're telling them what, what's possible to do, often within the existing legislation. We can make a difference. So, uh, one of my favorite um, uh, activists in Australia, not an ex Jehovah Witness activist, uh, environmental activist, I saw he lost his farm because he was focusing too much on the activism and too little on the actual work. So, I had to sit down and look through my calendar and make some choices so um, i still want to have 12 protests this year so if you can help me i'm really grateful uh, <laughs> because media attention creates media attention so i think we can make some difference here so i hope you like this video i hope you are among my 144,000 subscribers the tower will fall when the in god ring of my 144,000 subscribers is complete so let's make this a really good protest season 2020 so see you in paradise